Base plate wax is the most common material used for making occlusion rims. The wax rims are supposed to simulate the amount of space formerly occupied by natural teeth and related tissues. The technician builds up the wax rim to a standard average dimensions and attaches them to the record bases. During the patient's appointment, the dentist modifies the shape, height and thickness of the occlusion rims in keeping with the person's appearance and functional requirements. Now let's have a look at the specific construction characteristics of the maxillary occlusion rim. The occlusion rim is placed labial and buckled to the residual ridge because teeth will be placed in the neutral zone to occupy the position of their predecessors. The anterior height for the maxillary occlusion rim measures 22 mm from the labial flange to the occlusal plane. The labial surface of the rim falls on a line that drops from the sulcus perpendicular to the occlusal plane. The anterior width is 8 mm. The posterior height of the rim is 18 mm from the deepest point on the buccal flange to the occlusal plane. The posterior width of the rim is 10 mm. You will receive a ready-made occlusion rim which you'll be required to adapt to the temporary denture base you made earlier. Soften an extra sheet of base plate wax to seal the occlusion rim to the record base. Mark the midline on the cast and on the temporary denture base to make sure that the rim would be centered over the ridge. Soften the occlusion rim over the Bunsen burner and open it slightly to adapt it to the arch form of the residual ridge. Place the occlusion rim labially and buccally to the residual ridge. Note that, as we mentioned earlier, the labial surface of the rim falls on a line that drops from the sulcus perpendicular to the occlusal plane. Once the rim is correctly positioned, it is ready to be sealed to the base. Use the spoon end of the wax knife to soften the base plate wax and gradually drop it into the space between the rim and the base.
Once completely sealed, use an additional sheet of wax to shape the buckle and labial flanges. Use the flat end of the wax knife to shape the rim and make sure that you're only smoothening the surface without disturbing the measurements. Make sure to maintain the thickness of the flanges at the full depth of the sulcus, as the support is gained from the labial surfaces of the wax rim and not from the thickness of the flange, so avoid making them thick. Use a carver to remove any excess wax and to finish off the work. Measure the width of the rim anteriorly and posteriorly. Note that measurements within 1 mm of the required dimensions are acceptable. Mark the points where you're going to take the measurements of the height of the occlusion rim. Buckley, we're going to take it distal to the labial frenum and you're going to mark it on the cast and on the rim itself. Now do the same for the buccal frenum. Note here that the rim is 27 mm tall anteriorly and 24 mm tall posteriorly and we need it to be 22 anterior and 20 posterior. So what we're going to do is that we want to make it shorter. So mark 20 mm on the rim posteriorly using a curver. And then do the same anteriorly to about 22 millimeters. And do the same procedure on the left side. So here it also measures 27 millimeters. We're going to mark 22 millimeters. And posteriorly it measures 20 millimeters, which is the desired height. And then Draw a line that connects all the four dots together. Use a hot plate to remove excess wax height. Once done, repeat the measurements, 
now it's 20 millimeters posteriorly and 22 millimeters anteriorly. Cut the distal end of the wax rim anterior to the maxillary tuberosity in an oblique direction. Smoothen sharp edges using a wax knife. For a nice glossy finish of the wax, use a carver to remove all excess and to remove all sharp edges from the wax rim and then followed by brushing it with a soft toothbrush. Soften the wax rim over the flame and use soap water to clean the surface. When finished, wipe it with a piece of gauze. 